All right, welcome back to the build site. It's a new week. This morning we've got our first delivery of concrete fiber sheet, also known as hardy board or hardy flex, made from fiber and cement. And it looks like we're getting ready to place our first piece on the outside wall. We started to form up some of the exterior walls. So that would be the, the concrete fiber panels that'll make up the outside of the form. We've got uh, probably got half of the columns poured. I think we've got all the columns on this side and they're working behind me on the other side. This is the uh, the end result of the forms. These are those steel connectors that I showed you in the last video to show how the metalite makes up the form itself and then after removing the plywood they chip it down a little bit because this is going to be rendered in the end. Here's a look at the column from the other side. The interior forms. So they'll they'll pour from about this height, one meter roughly high, and then they'll form it up again and then pour another section. But I've been going through here and making sure that all of our electrical outlets are marked up over here I've just been writing on the wall just to make sure some of the things I've been adding as we go because sometimes when you look at your plans you know that's 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 really not always good enough you always seem to remember something as you're physically walking through here I am in the I'm in the walk-in closet here and you can see how they put the all the electrical pre-wires here that's why it's really critical that I get I get what I'm asking for before we pour these walls or else it'd be next to impossible to to really chip it out later it's not really impossible but you really don't want to go there because it's going to be poured concrete rather than hollow block and it'd be three times as hard to chip out came around the corner here and i'm in the master bath columns look really good I'm going to climb up on the scaffold and see if I can get a close-up of the, the typhoon straps that are uh, holding the roof down. I talked about that in a previous video. Let's see if I can get up. Here's a better shot. And you can see the uh, one-inch straps. There should be one of those on every section. going down so that's that would be a typhoon straps in the US you'd call them hurricane straps but the principle is the same here's a shot looking down on master bedroom walk-in closet master CR and Andre yes. come on I'm <laughs> And this is the, the hallway for the master bedroom suite and this hallway isn't really going to be used for anything else you if you walk down here the only place to go is the master bedroom but I'm uh, I'm putting in some extra outlets here in the hallway 
I added this one. And on, on the right here is where the office will be, my office. And it's, it's, it's still in work. But I did go in there and make sure that they know that I need a lot of, a lot of electric on this particular part of the wall. I'm going to have a server rack, at least a double server rack, possibly triple. So I'm going to have a lot of uh, power requirements here. Really, the only things that have changed since the last video were column, pouring columns. This column was done. Looks really good. Yeah, I'm happy with the way these came out. I just poured this one today, that one today and they're working on forming up this side of the house as far as columns. We've had a lot of rain the last week and today being Friday I think tomorrow we're just going to do some more columns. Look forward to next week where we start filling some of the walls. I put the Starlink into, into uh, bypass mode and tucked it up under the eave there and I I added this this router here, TP-Link, and that's actually giving us a lot better coverage. We can get coverage now all the way over to the other side and into the Baha'i Kubo on the next property. Temporary tank behind me. That's a 1,000 liter water tank. And that's on a temporary pedestal right now. So hopefully next week we're going to get our electrician back and he's going to take care of the wiring down to the Chateau Deef so we can have a automatic automatic fill on this this best tank here using it using that uh, the ball valve and the floating arm so we'll have to get our electrician and and our plumber back out here to make that connection to the Chateau Deef that's about all the updates for the house up on the on the bluff, but I'll give you an update on the Chateau Deef now. I'm, I'm here inside the Deef, and the, since the last time we met, we've uh, finished all the walls, the rendering of the walls. We've done the floor, which is the big thing. We used a lot of big flat river stones here, and uh, cemented everything in and I think they, the guys are going to come back one more time and, and lay down uh, my colored cement that I talked to you about. This is kind of a gold color, a light gold color and we're going to use that to fill in the spaces between the stones and the floor. But we had the we had the engineer that, that did our deep well, he came back out and he advised that we uh, make a little manhole here for maintenance on the, um, on the deep well uh, if we ever have to get the motor out or do anything else. But that, that pipe now is ho hooked up under the floor and our outlet is uh, on the opposite of this wall. Uh, as you heard in a previous video, I, I have plans for a sink in here and maybe a bench or one or two benches. The sink rough end is here. And remember the nozzle here isn't going to be a normal uh, fixture. I'm going to have it come out into some rocks and then uh, like a flat rock where the water will drain into the sink here. But what I'm thinking is uh, the sink will wrap around possibly all the way around here because this is the shower there'll be a shower here and a water heater this is the main for the shower and then uh, I'll probably st step down the sink and make a bench underneath the water so if you wanted to you could sit and just let the water fall on you here 
the hold up with the Chateau Deef has really been plumbing and electrical. Uh, here, if you don't already know, plum the plumbers and e electricians are in demand. So if they're not here, they're definitely working somewhere else. And getting them scheduled can be a challenge. But now that we've got the tank upstairs, uh, I'm pretty confident we're going to see our electrician and plumber next week. On the entrance to the DEEF, uh, one of the last things the guys did was, was make a little entranceway patio here with river stone and a cement border. And uh, Lido did a really excellent job on the, on the entryway. I mean, I love it. I'll step back here so you can get a better view of it. So, but now, um, me and Don Don will tackle trying to, to build a door. So uh, I'm thinking about uh, using like a one by three box, steel box to create a jam all the way up and down here and then have it open out. It'll open towards, towards me this way. I was originally going to have it open in, inwards, but um, I think the geometry is lining up better because the door is going to encompass that half moon there. I think it's lining up better to open this way. We just need to uh, tidy up a few more things and right now we're just doing a little cleanup of the area. We've got a little fire there to burn some trash. I'll transfer this box inside. So I think that'll do it for this update of the Chateau Deef and the house. Be sure to subscribe and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.